After the successful Mass Effect trilogy, where you have been in a struggle to save the galaxy from nastiness known as the Reapers, the developers said fuck it, let's go beyond saving the galaxy. On N7 day, Bioware released a trailer that made Mass Effect fans more excited than ever for the new title. Far removed from Commander Shepard's heroic acts, Mass Effect Andromeda will take place in the nearest major spiral galaxy, known as Andromeda. The name giving isn't much of a plot twist like we're used to in the Mass Effect trilogy, but oh boy, it gets better. A while ago there was a major leak with information that made me believe that Mass Effect Andromeda might be the perfect Mass Effect game that fans have been waiting for all this time, and that will generate your Mass Effect field. I think that this will be a good time to review the most interesting information that we have on the game. Remember to not get excited or disappointed yet, since everything that you are about to hear must be taken with a grain of salt. Most information comes from a random survey that a Reddit user filled in, and think about why Bioware would have a survey like that, to further improve the development of the game. So everything you're about to hear will most likely be even better when the game's released. Now, let's get started. Commander Shepard has passed down the torch to you, a new hero. You will be acting as a Pathfinder, a combat-trained but untested explorer and seven operative, leading an expedition into the Helios Cluster to establish a new home for humanity. The mysterious new galaxy that you will be exploring will be four times the size of Mass Effect 3's, which is pretty amazing considering the fact that Mass Effect 3 already was pretty big. I mean, all the planets you visited in Mass Effect 3 had their own lore, and other information like Earth hours in a day and even temperature. Imagine what it would be like if this was four times more. Even Garrus doesn't have to calibrate his sights to see that that's pretty amazing. To survive and colonize the new galaxy, you will need to grow your arsenal, your ship, your crew and make strategic and often uneasy alliances to fight against increasingly menacing foes. So it looks like your morals will be tested yet again, which is a great thing. The leak also includes something about the Remnant, a once powerful and mysterious alien race whose forgotten technology holds the key to gaining power in this region of the galaxy. As you uncover who the Remnant were and the mysteries their ruins contain, you are drawn into a violent race to find the source of their forgotten technology that will determine the fate of humanity. I think the Remnant here are like what the Protheans were in the original trilogy. The Protheans were a powerful ancient race that actually uplifted a lot of the known species in the Mass Effect trilogy. The Remnants are here described as a once powerful mysterious alien race, just like the Protheans. Further information about other species in Andromeda will follow. As you explore the galaxy you will find valuable resources and blueprints that will allow you to craft better equipment and weapons, such as improving your leg armor to allow you to jetpack jump, or upgrading your cryo beam, laser cannon, to target enemies or do area damage around you to clear out those threats. Upgrades like that sound great, but I do hope they will put the quality of the various upgrades over the quantity of them. I wouldn't want Mass Effect to become like Borderlands where most stuff is randomly generated. Don't get me wrong, Borderlands is great, but I feel like stuff loses its emotional value if it's randomly generated. And if if there's one thing Mass Effect has to its fans, it's emotional value. Speaking of emotional value, let's talk about the crew and the people that you will get to know throughout the story. You will recruit seven distinct crew members to fight by your side. Each crew member has a unique personality and specific abilities that open up strategic options as you choose which two of them to bring into each mission. For example, a crew member known as Korra, according to the known information, has the ability to deploy a biotic shield that protects everyone in the bubble, while still allowing you and your squad to fight your outfit. Your crew will grow alongside you as you explore the Helios Cluster, and you can choose how to upgrade your crew's weapons, gear and abilities to increase their individual combat effectiveness. So basically it's just like the original Mass Effect. In the original Mass Effect each crew member also has a unique personality and specific abilities that open up strategic options as you choose which two of them to bring into each mission. As I mentioned, they talk about a character Korra that can deploy a biotic shield for your squad to fire out of. This is very similar to Mass Effect 2's biotic barrier during the suicide mission. And for whoever it wasn't obvious, biotics will make a return in Andromeda. The original crew members or just familiar faces will probably not appear in the new game. Senior development director Chris Wynn says that it wouldn't make much sense. But then again, something doesn't always have to make sense in the Mass Effect universe, so it's not 100% certain. Bioware has stated that they will definitely keep their Mass Effect 3 saves. I wonder what impact Mass Effect 3 will have on Mass Effect Andromeda. Maybe you will finally get to meet one of Shepard's many blue children if you chose to romance Liara in Mass Effect 3. Now comes the best part of the known information yet. Your crew members aren't merely hired guns, they are part of the living universe in the Helios Cluster that develops in response to your actions and choices. You can increase each crew member loyalty by pursuing missions that are important to that specific character. For example, when a Krogan colony 
ship has been stolen by one of the outlaw factions, leaving the colonists stranded without resources to survive, your Krogan squadmate, Drak, is determined to strike out against them. If you take the mission and help him track down the outlaw's hideout to return the ship to its rightful owners, Drak's loyalty towards you and your squad will increase and Drak will unlock a brand new skill tree. You will be able to explore each individual's backstory and develop your relationship with them through conversations and unique missions. True to Mass Effect, what you choose to say will directly affect the crew's loyalty and relationship with you, and will open up different conversations and narrative opportunities at the end of the game, depending upon how you approach each encounter. Any Mass Effect fan knows that this really gets the juices flowing, action and choices will return and loyalty from Mass Effect 2 will make a return plus the way loyalty is gained. Also, if Krogans are making a return, then maybe the other species will also make a comeback in Andromeda. Different endings are also confirmed, let's hope they won't mess up here again. You can really tell that they have been listening to the fans and that they have picked the best stuff from the trilogy and put it in Andromeda. But let's talk about something new instead of returning content. The Helios cluster is thousands of light years across and you can't be everywhere at once. As you develop more colonies, resource bases and settlements, you have to be able to keep them safe. You will be able to recruit mercenaries and develop an AI controlled strike team that you can deploy to take on missions which will take real time to complete. You will be able to send your strike team out on a mission while you continue playing the main game and they will return 20-30 minutes later having gained rewards such as XP, currency and equipment based on the success of their mission. The whole strike team thing has this commander feel to it that I think lacked in the original Mass Effect. Maybe this time the feeling that you're actually commanding armies is more real. When you encounter a strike team mission in the single player mode, you can leave your strike team at their base and decide to tackle the mission yourself with your multiplayer roster of characters. You also have the option of recruiting up to 3 friends to play with you. The more friends you bring, the greater the challenge and the greater the reward. Though multiplayer is fun, it's not what it's about in Mass Effect. Multiplayer segments will only act as an asset and not as something that's necessary for you to fully enjoy the game, which is great news. Building upon the rich history of strategic dialogue that has defined the Mass Effect series, you can make meaningful choices in every conversation you have with the characters that impact the way your game evolves. The next Mass Effect adds deeper control over your conversations through a greater ability to interrupt and change the course of the conversation as it is happening. During certain conversations you will be able to take action based choices such as the option to pull out your gun and force someone to open a door, instead of convincing them to do it through conversational guile. Action based choices give you more options for how you approach dialogue with characters in the game and can lead to more extreme outcomes on the story as it evolves around the decisions you make when interacting with a huge cast of NPC characters. So basically more Paragon and Renegade choices. Awesome. Remember the long, long elevator rides in Mass Effect 1? Or all the loading screens in the rest of the trilogy? Well, BioWare has also done something about this. As you pilot your spaceship Tempest across the hundreds of solar systems that are seamlessly connected in the next Mass Effect, transitions between activities like flying your Tempest across a solar system to land on a mineral rich planet, then jumping into your Mako to explore the surface of a planet, all happen smoothly without loading screens. Yes, the Mako. The Mako is going to make a return and it's been confirmed. But wait, there's more. In Mass Effect Andromeda you can customize your Mako and modify it, so maybe you can finally leave your dreams and jet jump your Mako out of orbit. How exactly can you fly your ship seamlessly through the new galaxy? Well, it's because you are the one who's actually flying it. You will switch to first person view of the ship. You can then navigate through planets which will have markers and waypoints to move through them and if you wish to go faster you can engage in FTL drive just like they do in the first trailer. Now there's just one thing left that is still a mystery to us, the all important thing that made sad scenes sadder. Give hopeful scenes more hope and make dramatic scenes even more dramatic. Music. I really hope that the music in the next Mass Effect game will be true to the music in the original trilogy. The only music related thing people seem to talk about is the Ghost Rider song used in the first trailer. But guys, think about the bigger picture here. The thing that actually matters is the actual music that you will hear while playing the game. Do you have an idea of what the music in Mass Effect Andromeda will be like? What are your hopes for the next Mass Effect? Or what did you like, hate about the information so far? Let us know in the comment section. I have been Petard, your glorious lord, and I shall see you next time.